Okay, um, this is going to be a video about computing the dissecting. Let me say it like this: dissecting the IRR, the the rate of return that you earn on a loan. And I hope it's a little more theoretical. <laughs> Oops, there goes the dog. Um, we're going to put some uh, loan parameters in. Once we put the loan parameters in, including the fees and everything else, the first step in this video is going to be c computing the the rate of return that you earn on on the loan, which is easy, the IRR, the cash flow, including the fees and everything else. Um, and then uh, computing the NPV relative to the to the cost of funding on the loan here this would be a, a monetary amount to euros or, or whatever and then computing from this risk premium that you earn the maximum amount of cumulative loss probability that's implied by this number okay now we're going to combine this with risk rating and then we're finally going to get uh, return on capital associated with the loan. Some of this might be, frankly, bullshit to you, but hopefully it will have a few as normal, as usual, a few little Excel techniques, and discuss some tricks in computing and dissecting the, the cash flows on the loan. So, you know, we're going to make in our loan inputs page, you notice that these red numbers come from this. If you press Shift Control C, it goes through and uh, 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 colors where the things come from. And that's a that macro was a very big pain. Now what we're going to do is make a little customized loan, which uh, we should copy here. Okay, and uh, I shouldn't sigh that much. I know I shouldn't. Okay, so we can compute the other customized loans here. And then we're going to put a little bit of a uh, gimmick in there. Okay, and I'm just going to do one or two of these things. They should be boring to you if you've ever watched one of my videos which if you've ever even watched it you've probably kind of opened it looked at the first few minutes and then closed it because it's too boring but if you do this I've, I often add these little things from the developer tab and then I told you that somebody in my class years ago from Russia told me oh if you do that why don't you just go from one screen to the other so we'll make it go from 1 to 100. And then when we go to another page, of course, you have to go to a non-graph page. I said, of course, I don't know why. And then I had a, I have a special little column for all of the uh, customized links so we can do it for all of these things. And uh, we can put the different sides of the loan in. Okay, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to do a similar thing now with all the rest of these, which, it, which will be incredibly boring. I'm just going to copy this uh, uh, to the next one. Okay. And then we... Uh, uh, for, for really all of these, it's... Uh, this this would be this number now, of course, divided by not 100, 1,000, I think. And I was wrong. It's divided by 10,000. Okay. And let me switch it off because then we'll go and link this account and uh, you know I'm going to make this 35 and divide it by 1,000. Okay, and 
50, 10, 15, okay? Uh, this is going to be really boring, so I'll stop the video. Okay, the dog's barking a little bit now. Now, I forgot to tell you, if, if you just want to change these, and if you have a, a, a column over here, we're just going to then, we, we just right-click and just, of course, change this number now. You're going to, uh, once you do that, you're going to have to change the upper and lower boundaries, but that makes it a little bit easier, okay? This boring crap, so this is... So every time you can, the first thing is just to change the cell link, and you don't have to then uh, go back. So a little interlude there. Now, um, so all of these now are connected, Oops. <laughs> with the exception of that one. Uh, okay, and perhaps this one. Okay, and this one. And this default value is 15, okay? Uh, they're connected, so this one is this divided by 100, this divided by 100. Some are divided by 100, some are divided by 50. Now, if you um, apply the any other loan, like uh, the Senegal Rice Loan, okay, and then it won't apply. Okay, now uh, I accidentally assigned a macro to this. Okay, I didn't want to, and here's what I'm going to explain you could you can do. Uh, don't worry about this. This is what we're going to talk about right now. So now if you right-click on this, like this, and then press Control-A, just like finding the whole sheet, it'll find this one and, and this one. Now if you assign a macro... And let's assign a new macro. Let's call it custom message. And that's going to be a new macro. And all we want to do in this uh, custom message is, is say, you know, first of all, let's uh, find... Um, this is the code number. Shift Control F3 to uh, make a range name. So now we have a range name on this loan code. Now if this loan code equals the custom code, so let's make a little code number up here, just in case we'd add some other loans. Okay, control R to copy it, of course. If that, let's just make this a customized code. Cust code. So remember, this is the customized code, and this is the loan code. So if the customized code, if range, Cust code. Now, uh, not equal customized range loan uh, code. Then we'll uh, put a message box. Uh, we can make it really mean, but we won't make it so mean. Uh, these uh, gimmick spinner boxes, I don't know how to... Only work when the custom loan is selected. Now you could also then put switch the code to that, the loan code to the custom code, but we won't. We'll just put end if. Okay. So um, now let's 
So if we, uh, right now we have the Senegal rice loan. Okay. You want to see the. Okay, and uh, let's put the hotel loan. And of course, I shouldn't, I, because remember when I press shift con uh, 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 control A, I say uh uh too much, I know. Now, if I would try to change these now, it, it uh, does that, and it changed it as well, which I don't really call, care. Um, oh, the hotel loan was blank anyway. Now, if I switch that and make it the custom loan, then it didn't work either. This is seven. The loan code is, ah, excuse me. I, I made that mistake on pr purpose, of course. So the hotel code, let's change it back to the custom code and let's, okay. So now it works, okay? So we have a little message and I've done all the gimmicks and now we're gonna get to the real finance. Before we do that, I'm gonna copy uh, some of these. So of course you can uh, hold the control key uh, and uh, copy these, put these to this one, um, would you like them here, maybe here. Okay, and let's just make sure that that didn't uh, change it here. Okay, so that's that. Now, what we're going to do is, if it's the customized loan here, if we increase the credit spread, we can see what happens to the IRR on the loan. Now, um, shit, I... Uh, do I allow, allow this to go to zero? I think I don't allow it to go to zero, which is really stupid. Let, we're gonna allow the fees to go to zero. Uh, just a minute. Okay, I think it kind of works now. So if we change the size of loan, so let's say our base cost of funding is two or, or base interest rate, LIBOR rate, I didn't, specify whether it's uh, swapped or not but let's say that's two and a half percent and we have no fees whatsoever which can be all be changed uh, then we uh, IRR is simply the uh, the interest rate on the loan okay and that's when we do things on an annual basis now let's uh, uh, first press shift control C I am going to try to keep the gimmicks to a minimum now. So I read in all of the, the data on the credit spread and everything, and the total base rate is this. And then we uh, put the fees in, the maturity pe period, and we have a, a little uh, shift control T, shift control F. So we, we show when the uh, repayment of the loan occurs okay and this is I've just done this on a very simple annual basis now when we do this here's the one thing so here's the cash flow on the loan here's the repayment so this has a level repayment it looks like uh, looks like one is a <coughs> level repayment and two is a more <coughs> repayment. now the dog is just barking okay no, 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 no. I'm making a video. Shut up. I'm sure he doesn't really care. Now, what I like to do first is first compute the effective credit spread. Now, the credit spread, that the, uh, the credit spread is five, but that doesn't include compounding. 
took a little compounding on the credit spread. We take one plus the. Uh, oh, 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 keeping going. Stop! Tetra No! 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 And then we put divide by one plus the plus the um, the ba base rate. Okay. And then we put minus. One. Now it doesn't work unless you compute a kind of implied. I'll call it effective. Uh, effective credit spread. Okay. And then here's the trick, and I can almost, I can never really remember it. Now, you let's start a counter, and we take this last counter, multiply it by 1 plus the effective credit spread, and multiply that by the... Um, repayment period. We're going to have a couple of issues with this. Okay, shift control C because we... Okay, now that's the credit spread. So if you then would take the total cash flow on the loan, I'm sorry, yeah, take the, the, uh, this divided by this, Okay, and only apply that in the repayment period. This is the, the when you take out the this credit spread, what is left over is the that this this accounts for the cost of funding. So what's left over is the credit spread. Okay, and to prove that our cost of funding was two hundred. 250 and we just take the uh, IRR on this number which is the total cash flow divided by divided 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 by this compounded uh, credit spread now I'm sitting in a coffee shop for about two hours to figure out that you could have perhaps known this and figured it out very easily okay but then the nice thing about this is what's ever, what's ever left over, which is the cash flow minus this, is that pays the premium. This is the monetary amount of the premium on the loan earned. Okay, And then you can take the NPV of that at the cost of funding. And this, if you have a high rate of inflation, I think you have to be very, very careful with this. You should take and probably put this in real terms. Got to take the inflation out of the balance of the loan and kind of adjust for the fact that the true liability in real terms goes down. So right now with a low inflation environment it kind of uh, works reasonably well. And then we can get the implied, uh, we can put the PV of the risk premium divided by the PV, the, the loan. Now, and that's just this number divided by the loan amount. So this says, and now we have to be very careful about this. What we'd like to do is compare this to uh, kind of the, if this is a 10-year loan, I'd like to see what the um, compound risk premium here is over time. And uh, we have to make sure we're measuring the right thing. Uh, these things are the, let's talk it out. It's This is the percentage of total AAA loans at the beginning that defaulted by year 10. Hopefully they weren't AAA in year 10. They probably went down gradually to AA and single A and C and all that. This is the percentage of C. 
Now, if we just do this in a very simplistic uh, manner, this, uh, this risk premium percent, 32.98, would imply that we're somewhere below a single B loan if we have a 10-year ten, uh, ten um, uh, tenor. Now, uh, I don't have a 10-year ten tenor, and I haven't put the these things in yet. Watch these uh, screw up. Okay. So... Oops, not bad, don't worry. Okay, so let's change this to uh, 10 years. And now we have an implied 22% uh, uh, default proper pro probability, but we have to be a lot more careful with this. First of all, this is on an annual basis. Loans are really very often on a quarterly basis or a semi-annual yield basis. This doesn't account for the fees you earn on a loan. Part of the fees, whether we like it or not, part of the fees really go to uh, enhance the IRR and this implied credit spread should be really higher if we have some some fees on the loan. So we're going to make those sorts of adjustments first. And the very first adjustment is, is uh, let's say the months in each period are six months. Okay. And um, now uh, uh, just so, so now we have this, and we have to adjust for the semi-annual compounding and everything else. I'm going to pause this just for a minute so I think about how to structure the video and how to do the calculations. Okay, um, I am coming back to you. Now, um, we allow... Don't worry about the. We allow quarterly, uh, semi-annually. Forget this one, and then annually. Okay, and there should be a data validation here. If you don't know how to do that, you go to data, and then um, uh, validation and data validation. And you use the input message thing here. That's pretty. Okay, so we allow you to put different uh, periods in the model. Now, um, it, I'm just going to go down and kind of show you some of the adjustments you need to make. Uh, everything's in the input, even including the end dates and begin dates are okay. When you make the uh, low the repayment period you better divide by the periods per year which is the if it's one or uh, so this is uh, uh, you divide by this one or or if it's uh, six month periods you divide by two or quarterly you divide by four okay and uh, uh, same here with the uh, 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 percentage, the interest rate, and same here with this interest rate. So I temporarily put this up here. So if we switch it to six month period, we've got the half year interest rate and we have a longer uh, repayment period. You see it goes through half years and if we make it uh, Three, then we have it quarterly and everything adjusts automatically so you just divide it out you can look I'm going to put this file I should have uh, said this right away I don't know when the hell I'll put the file I'm gonna put it in uh, since you do I'm gonna make a special uh, thing here if it says financial analysis and, and, and 
financial models of analysis of banks put it right here and it'll be credit analysis so the next time I make one of these I'll uh, further elaborate on uh, where it is okay and then we, uh, now here's a little bit uh, tricky thing well the cost of funding the two and a half percent you just better put it in periodic terms and then now the 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 effective credit spread uh, this I, I should put effective credit spread and periodic and credit spread from periodic IRR so that's where we remember we um, just increase this. We started with one here, I think. Should have pressed shift to control C so we could have really seen this. And uh, it goes up from there. And remember the big thing this is the debt service now. I changed that a little. It's the debt service divided by this, this compound factor. And the remainder is what you earn in the risk premium. Okay. And uh, then you can say, well, let's take all of this th stuff, which is the risk free portion, and let's make sure it is equivalent to the cost of funding, which it is. And then you can take the uh, 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 cost of funds of this annual one, and this is the X NPV not a regular NPV, that's why you can use an annual number, and then you get this premium as a percentage of the loan. So if we put it that you can see the good news is it doesn't have much of a effect really. It's 22% of the loan for 12 a, a year, and the value is don't worry about the nine, it's it's if it's an, if it's semi-annual, it's 23% and quarterly 20%. So I don't need these anymore, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to, uh, let me see, how, how are we doing? This is 27 minutes, that's certainly enough, so let's stop this video. Now I'm going to make a subsequent video where we equate uh, this, uh, this this number I don't know if it really means much um, this you know we want to equate this to these kind of numbers and these kind of numbers accumulate over time and we want to take this NPV thing and reconcile it against the kind of uh, standard uh, I guess cumulative default rates and remember these default rates really um, don't incorporate the loss given default either so you've got to be careful at first let's just do it with a hundred percent loss given default and then we'll adjust it for that so that's kind of the next step of the the theory okay so uh, you can find this file at edbodmer.com and uh, we're going to the next step.